do you want to do a podcast? We make a darn good team. It always goes without a hitch. Let's head to Twitch and go start up the stream. Do you want to do a podcast? It's the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Let's start now. Hi everyone and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. Come? Alright, I'll do my I'll do my own bit for myself. Oh, oh wait, no silence! <laughs> We're doing it! Get off the road! Hey Dave. Hey Boater. Why was Hypno so energetic? To try to get to the other side. Because it wasn't drowsy anymore. Yes. <laughs> you nailed it. Yeah, good job, <laughs> Dave. Hey, everyone, and welcome to the Nerd Glasses Podcast. I'm Boater. I'm Dave Mann. We've got a ton of great stuff to look forward to in the show today. A lot of really cool topics and a lot of awful topics that we're going to try to put a fun spin on like we always do. <laughs> <laughs> Watch as fun. the world burns around us, but we're going to have a good time. Yeah. It's <laughs> Hi, I've been in that kind of mood lately. How have you been? <laughs> uh, playing a lot of Pokemon. Playing so a lot of Pokemon. Just so in other words, I'm lot. great. <laughs> a lot of Pokemon. <laughs> a lot of Pokemon. Nice. We will we'll get to that in a second. Let's start off. Let's get a Twitch ban out of the way really quick first. We're having a great time. This guy hasn't been. Uh, Hube Sama, who is a South Korean IRL streamer um, who typically just kind of broadcasts his daily life in Japan. This is his first ban, but he's often been involved in controversy. Um, during a stream on January 23rd, uh, I was just too late to uh, mug for the, the selfie. Um, <laughs> he met the streamer Crazy Japanese in a bar and harassed her. While again, while he's streaming his interaction, trying to touch her, chasing her down the street after she left the bar and tried to exit from the situation and just being uh, awful. Um, God. So it took him a few days to realize, oh, maybe that shouldn't be, you know, uh, VOD that's still up did take it down, but four days after the event, he was banned. And it's said that it's probably an indefinite ban. So, good job swinging, swinging for the bleachers on your very first one. Good job. Um, maybe not necessarily permanent, but there is no uh, current end time. Lala <laughs> <laughs> Larson putting F in chat. <laughs> yeah, yep. <laughs> that's that's about appropriate. That is the level of respects that are paid to. That kind of BS. So, that's who was banned in the past seven days. Hube Sama. Um, F's in chat. Uh, welcome, uh, Lala Larson, as well as the three of us here in this room. I'm also seeing in chat. <laughs> and you if don't you don't know that. Also, you don't know that Steve has a tab open still. He might have just chatted and then uh, and then vacated the, the premises. See, you say that. He could be typing blind. <laughs> Steve does. Steve types in his sleep, by the way. I um, mean, I believe it. At one point, at one stream, I had Steve in chat, in a Discord call, playing Overwatch, Resident Evil, Resident Evil 4, and talking to his wi his future wife all at the same time. That's great. Um, That's amazing. We fucking lost that game real bad. <laughs> huh, but it was I still wonder why. <laughs> in my, in my pre-roll for Brunch with Boater, at one point I'm like, ooh, I get ice cream. This is going to go poorly. I can only do so much at once as I'm trying to win, trying to drive an American truck simulator and engage with someone talking about Magic the Gathering. Guess which one fell through? Truck goes sideways. <laughs> but truck go beep, beep. <laughs> I mean, it went beep, beep after I hit the asphalt. Um, <laughs> honk. Uh, let's see. Such a clown getting banned. Um, let's see. Yeah, so that... I totally had something else I was going to say, but I forgot it. Um, Dave, what have you been playing in the past seven days well, while well, you're not getting banned? Before we get into what I've been playing, I would love to talk about the games that are coming out in the next seven days. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Please, um, please. And I have three of them that are, that are really going to change the complexion of how some people choose to play their games. Or you're not going to like them and you're not going to play them at all, in which case that's on you. Um, okay. But the first one drops today, and it was another one of those games that got delayed because of the pandemic. Okay. Um, it was, it is, as we're about to see, in Nerd Division. Um, 
we are uh, uh, looking so at our uh, our friends uh, over at the Life is Strange remaster, which is a nice. remaster of the uh, original Life is Strange and then Life is Strange Before I the Storm, which was kind of a prequel, but then gave more context to awesome. the story as a whole. Yeah. Um, great game, great series. Uh, if you enjoy cinematic games and things like that, if you haven't played it yet, you need to get it like now. In fact, you can get it on PlayStation 4, on, Xbox One, Windows, <laughs> and let's check that pulse. <gasps> Google Stadia. Is that you, Stadia? God. Welcome back from the light. <laughs> You're still with us. <laughs> Stadia, just remember, if you don't come to the break room to get muffins, everyone's going to think that you're dead in your cube. Um, but this was one of the games that was delayed from 2021. Um, you'll notice I left off the Switch, um, and it's because they're still working on that port. Uh, it'll be coming sometime later in 2022 is the best answer the research I got could do. Well, because, like, Life is Strange in the first place didn't look terribly dated. And with the updates that they're doing, I'm wondering if there's stuff that, like, really taxes the Switch hardware. It, it definitely is, and I, I bet they're also optimizing some of the gameplay features that are cute quick time events uh -huh. things like that fair to switch True. mechanics as opposed to <laughs> ah so 2023 says dude icarus in chat not wrong not wrong um but life is strange if you enjoy storyline games that are a lot of plot this is something really worth taking a bite yeah. out of yeah, that looks cool. Like, I've always... I've meant to play Life is Strange. I've had so many people tell me to play it. Now I know that there's an updated version that I can go for. Uh, although I'll check, because sometimes on remasters, people are like, oh, they messed a lot up. Because, like, the originals are still available. Look at you, Grand Theft Auto on uh, Grand Theft Auto Collection. Still not right. Still not right. Um, the second game is, is one that... A franchise that sounds like it should be your and I's game. But I know for a fact that neither of us play it. Um, and it's not a reflection on the title itself. It's just a matter of, damn it all, did the first game come out in the middle of a bunch of nerdy things? And damn it all, is this second one coming out uh, on the fourth? Okay. And uh, once again, Pokemon getting ready for other games. No time, but you might have some time for Dying Light 2 Stay Human. Okay, okay. And... Uh, action RPG for the Windows, PlayStation 4, 5, the Switch. the Windows? Okay, X, Grandpa. S, uh, and, and uh, Xbox One, uh, as well as for the Nintendo. Nice. Um, it's, a, it's a direct continuation of Dying Light, the original. It's taking 20 years after the first. It's a direct continuation with a. 20-year gap. Well, yeah. Do you know what direct continuation means? I, I do, but you seem to want to be the dictionary corner. Why don't you tell me? It would pick up exactly where it left off. I exactly. Plotline-wise, it does. Continue. So, Dying Light 2 uh, uh, displays a new hero, obviously, and they are, in fact, infected. But instead of you just becoming one of the shambling undead, you can activate powers and different abilities to create your character in a manner befitting how you choose to play. Once again, hardcore parkour mechanics throughout the game. Nice. And so much fun going on. Um, the question is, will you choose to stay human or will you lead humanity to its end? Um, that's... Dying Light 2 looks very good, uh, looks like a fun game, and it is always very fun. Just as a, a quick little tip in the Dying Light franchise, if it's dark out, you shouldn't be out. Um, <laughs> it's just deadly, just deadly. Um, this third one, of course, is coming out. Uh, it is coming out next Tuesday, but I wanted to give it a little more space and time to chit-chat about because I'm okay. very excited for it. It is the game Sifu. It's coming out on the PlayStation 4, PlayStation See, 5. Sometimes when Steve sets these up for us, there's different things. Like, he had a light died on the last one. So, like, these can't be indicative of whatever. I'm like, Sifu, I wonder if that's short for... So oh, that's the actual name of the game. Okay. That is the Continue. title of the game? No, no, it's 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 fun seeing the little, little behind-the-scenes stuff, and I love... You know what? I will take a picture of that, and I will post it in the Discord, 
yep. down below for folks to be able to see uh, what topics we have. We'll post it after the show. Exclusive though. behind the scenes content right at the Insane Games Discord in the About section. Make sure you join up. So this title, very interestingly enough, is an arcade style beat em up where your main character is attempting to avenge the death of his family in a kung fu film. Revolutionary idea. However, but that sounds awesome. What? It's, oh, no, no, it is amazing. What's making this game even cooler is when you are defeated, you have a magic talisman that then uh, uh, gives you new life but it ages you forward as you go, and you lose the game when you eventually age to the point where you die. Okay. As it ages you. Um, age 74. <laughs> Yep. And then, you know, getting picked and up and slammed like that at 74. Yeah! Um, you're not going to bounce back from that one. That's interesting. I like that. This is a game that I am absolutely going to beg to get. Uh, I would almost love if, like, at the end of the game, it, it presented a summary of the game in, like, a comic style, so that whatever age you were when you finish a stage or whatever, it says, you know, that as though you were that age at the start of the stage and like, oh, many years passed between this event and this and whatever. And it like played out in like a cool comic kind of thing. That would be awesome. The, the art style of it does belie some comic and, and, and things like that. Um, and I'm really looking forward to seeing this one. I saw it, um, you know, a, a couple of years ago. There was like little mention of it here and there. Um but it looks awesome, uh, and it looks like a lot of fun. That's nice. That looks cool. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Do we... Uh, too many games. Too many games. Too many games. Yeah, oh, absolutely. As the best. And if we miss Because that's what's happening, is now it's February. Now we're back into a big, a big game release window. January had a couple things. Pokemon. Um, but for the most part, it was the calm after the holiday storm and before the February storm. Yeah. Each time you get back up, um, you will if we miss any out, if there's any games that you would like to hear a vague description over top of or again. our opinions and on, make sure to hear, make really. your voice heard, both in chat and then just in general. We would love to hear from you. Um, we do have one Danbury update. Okay. Uh, if we want to, if we want to move that, uh, into... Yeah, yeah, let's hear it. Uh, and it's the that... You die, the faster you <sighs> I, don't, I don't mind... Uh, 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 I'm going to undersell the hell out of this. But uh, a certain prestigiousness has now come to Danbury. A certain gloss, a certain glowering, a certain successfulness that was missing previously. And that's because... You're definitely not a thesaurus. Our hero... J. Jonah Jameson has moved into Danbury, and he has He's brought with him, want. which we will show on Nerd Vision, trademark, the Daily Bugle has come to Danbury, and uh, I'm really excited to uh, to see what uh, what articles come from the Daily Bugle, what editorials, what coverage of of the superheroes and villains that may happen. What uh, what of this crisis of, of too many emergency responders and not enough citizenry? What about when the school board decides to cut the budget? Of course, in Danbury and not in real life because no one cares about that stuff at all. You bastards. Uh, I heard something about the school board wanting to ban a certain brick from being used for construction. I don't know about that. <laughs> what about exactly? <laughs> What about <laughs> what of the Daily Bugle's distribution and things like that? Well, you can look forward to this and so much more coming from Danbury every week. Uh, Dude Icarus, our field reporter, did also say uh, that he was unfortunately unable to get uh, images of this, but Hurricane Mike struck again um, a couple of times, actually, and I was there for finally for one of yeah. them. Yeah. Um, and, uh, he took out a, he took out a school bus. Oh my God. Was there anyone on the school bus? Unfortunately, I do have a report that there was a driver and one student, but oh no. everyone seems to have been fine okay, good. in the Lego universe of Danbury. Um, there was, there was also then what, what else was, what else got busted? Cause it was some, and I was standing there and it wasn't the bus. 
Uh, it was the bugle. It was the bugle itself. Um, as the bugle was being constructed by so many talented builders and artisans, uh, unfortunately, uh, Butterfingers prevailed, and I dare say that dastardly Spider-Man struck the bugle and caused some window damage and things. But uh, thankfully, the hard workers in Danbury were able to get it back up and running, and uh, we'll have none of this... This uh, this pro Spider Man rhetoric in Danbury uh, will have only the truth, the truth that Spider Man is a murderer. Is there? Can you get Spider Man in your insurance coverage in Danbury? Uh, I mean, if you have, uh, you know, uh, uh, there. I believe there is some superhero uh, uh, okay there, uh, extra coverage you have to pay for. Okay. Okay. Um, so, I, so similar to, like, you know, when you see the Avengers fighting out in New York City and Hulk picks up your car to yeet at some alien, you're like, oh, man, good thing I got State Farm. <laughs> I can't imagine what that what that must be like, and I'm really, now I'm going to look for the issues, because I know there was a Spider-Man um, comic where, um, where they did, like, the people around Spider-Man and not Spider-Man. Uh-huh. Um, and it was just so fun to well, see. Well, we were just talking that you like that kind of story. Oh, yeah. um, what uh, TV Tropes refers to as Lower Decks episodes. After, I, th I think, a, a Star Trek episode that was called Lower Decks, um, where the focus is entirely on what are otherwise the background characters. That's our Danbury update this week. We're looking forward to this and so much more coming to your Lego City. Um, so What's going on, Scott? How are you, my friend? <laughs> <laughs> uh, let's see. Uh, playing. So so that's, that's what's coming out. That's what's going on in Danbury. Dave, what have you been doing? What have you been playing recently? Well, um... You know, now that I'm thinking about it, I gotta go because uh, I got a lot of Pokemon uh, to play. If you're Just... saying right here, we have 36 minutes to keep talking, then you can go play more Arceus. Okay. Uh, it's, it's probably it's... gonna be more like an hour. But, on, you know. on my stream, by the way, it's Arceus. Uh, we took a vote, um, and then that Spider-Man loving. Do you Joe think I care about connect... democracy? What? Nothing. <laughs> tried to. Uh, Try to you can citadel yourself over there with your punctuation and grammar. Um, I'm, I'm almost positive that's why Dan stuck the two of us together because he heard me talk once and he was like, <laughs> <laughs> "So, uh, I've been playing a lot of Pokemon Legends Arceus and I'm really, really enjoying it. Um, it's it's a, uh, a fresh paint of coat." Uh, on a Pokemon game that has had many great games, and then the Diamond and Pearl remakes uh, that are that are in the not so great category, uh, but it's fun. It's just flatly fun. I've been hearing so much good stuff when it came out over the weekend. A bunch of people sharing stuff, talking about it. I haven't heard a negative thing except for inventory space and how much it costs to get more. I I have heard people confusingly complaining about graphics. Except, what's the thing? It's a Nintendo game. What are you doing? Are they complaining about graphics or art style, or do they not know the difference? Uh, I believe from some of them, it is it is uh, it is a combination of both. It is a not knowing what one is, but then there are some people out there that are just genuinely mad that like the graphics aren't seemingly better, and I don't yeah. really understand what they're bitching about because the game looks amazing. Like yeah. <laughs> Sigh. So many cool Pokemon, such a good storyline. Um, so many Bidoofs. So many Bidoofs. So many Bidoofs. I love you, Bidoof. Oh. Yeah. I, I will say, and I'm sorry, we'll ta I'll tangent for just one more moment Go ahead, about it. go ahead. But there was one mission, and I complained about it to Mike and Tom when I got to the store on Sunday, but... It was a mission where they're like, they're like, traitor, traitor, we need your help. There's Bidoof's terrorizing the town. Terrorizing? That's Excuse exactly, me? Yeah. And so I was like, I was like, my God. How can this a Bidoof is, terrorize? I was like, this is a mission we absolutely need to play on stream if Bidoof are t terrorizing this town. What was even funnier was you're standing there talking to the security officer, and they're like, there's been a gang of Bidoof, and they're just tearing up the town, this and then the other. And then. Those adorable little Snickers bars, just three of them, just scamper past. And the trusher goes, there they are now! And I'm like, oh, look at them scamper. 
Look at you! A like, gang of Bidoofs! Like, are they in, like, leather vests riding hogs? Like, <laughs> nope. Got the patch, like... <laughs> nope, they were literally just hungry little guys, and they just scampered and were adorable. Selling um, drugs and money laundering, those Bidoofs. So what you had to do to complete this mission, spoiler alert, uh, was you had to get your own Bidoof, and you would, you would approach the gang Bidoof, and you would put out yours so that the gang Bidoof would be like, sup, baby. And uh, then the, the uh, uh, over-exhausted town guard could catch these rogue Bidoof. Um, the Kremlin is taking notes. What I really enjoyed about that, though, was that by the end of it, the, the one guard that was like so sick of these little guys scampering around all adorable-like was like, we're just going to release them back into the wild. And the construction corps was like, no. We're going to keep the Bidoof as construction workers, and now there's Bidoof working in the village, and so, it just warms my heart. So there were Bidoof gang members terrorizing the town, selling drugs, money laundering, and all that. They were arrested, and now they're forced prison labor? I mean, so you definitely belong to the, uh, the Pearl and Diamond camps from this game. <laughs> Uh, because that's all those camps talk about. Is, How dare you catch those Pokemon and those balls? And I'm like, well, no, oh. I have no. I, I, for the most part, like I'm, I'm fine with that. Aside from being, but like when you start off with the Bidoof are terrorizing the town, I'm gonna take this at straight value. You talk about a gang of Bidoofs. It was an adorable little little gang of three Snickers bars eating wood stuff in the town. Uh, Katie Button chat with Catch, catch Me, me Leather Daddy. Daddy. What's going on, Katie? Welcome. What the woman who needs ingredients for her herbal medicine says she needs something with three leaves and it ends up being an oddish. Oh I, my god! <laughs> so I I started that one on stream uh, on on Sunday and then I got so tied up with the Bidoof and this dumbass Mr. Mime mission that just for the life of me I couldn't do. <laughs> I, I, I like, finished brunch with Boater and I go over and I just see him like puzzling out a mime. <laughs> like... And I was so excited for the Bidoof mission. And then when they were like, oh, Mr. Mime came into town. And I was like, did someone call Ash's mom, first of all? But then uh, 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 if you were born before 1998, it's a reference to. Like, <laughs> uh, but we're, it was just so much fun. The game has so many adventures. And I'm not even, I'm more than 12 hours into mm -hmm. it, per se. And I just. Like I started playing it Friday at five, and suddenly I looked around, and it was it was one o'clock in the morning. Like it, the game games. has my attention, and I love streaming it. I'm going to be streaming it again this Wednesday on the weekend, Wednesday here on the Same Games TV, and Friday and Sunday on my own channel, DM three one four. Check it out. This Wednesday, by the way, we're going to be I'm going to be letting viewers name the Pokemon I catch during the stream. Oh yes, oh yes. Um, I'm gonna Subscribers have Steph need watch. not apply. I'm going to have Steph bits. watch watch with her knowledge of Sons of Anarchy characters. <laughs> For any Bidoof. I do feel bad, though, that, like, the Bidoof are so trusting. You just run right up to him. And I literally just, I can't battle them. It just feels bad. <laughs> but the problem is it winds up being me just standing over it and then just going, like, <laughs> with a Pokeball. And I'm like, that's... Better to do? I didn't like, realize you had something in your hand. <laughs> it wasn't Conspiracy Baseball viewers. Do not worry. Uh, no. So I've been playing a game called Walkabout Mini Golf. Or rather, I played this uh, Friday night. Nice. Um, it is an Oculus Quest game. Or uh, it's a VR game, multi-platform, whatever. But a friend of mine who just got one said, you have to try this out. So I played a couple rounds with him on Friday night. And it's great. It's a mini golf game. The physics feel perfect um you know being able to swing vary your speed we played on two nice. maps one was a very realistic it feels like it would just be like pirate's cove uh like the mini golf courses um another one was like a sci-fi thing where you're in orbit of saturn and it was cool and the multiplayer was great because when you see someone else what you see is a big floating head and their hand holding the putter and that's it no facial animation being able to read what you're doing with that Nothing, but it's still weirdly expressive. Like, at one point, I saw him, you know, uh, hit the ball and look at it and go to the cup, and I just saw him do, like, deflate when it missed. Yeah. And then another time, like, I hit it, I hit the wrong ramp, it ends up, you know, a, you know 
too far away from the cup. And he's, you know, down by the cup, and I'm up at the, the tee spot. Uh, and he just kind of, like, looks at it. And then looks at me, and I'm like, "Don't look at me like that. It's your your go. Go ahead." <laughs> it was really cool and expressive. It was a lot of fun. Um, I would say that my Oculus battery has enough time for two 18 hole rounds, and that's with us at one point during the pirate one, just taking a break, wandering away from the balls, playing on the pirate ship that's cracked open. It's a lot of fun being able to like wander around the environments and stuff. So. Nice. In addition to ones that I mentioned last week, Walkabout Mini Golf, absolutely recommend if you have a VR headset and know other people that do as well. So it's mini golf that I can't get thrown out of for not wearing pants and getting drunk at, right? Correct. Perfect. Or for I'm swinging in. over your knee. There was one where I was like, I'm cranking this. Wee! <laughs> uh, mini golf places love when you do that, especially when they're busy. <laughs> I, at one point, we just started, you know, like, with the putter. Start fighting. Ah, ha, 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 ha. And um, then we go through, like, a cave in that pirate one, and I just stand off to the side without realizing that I'm directly over a tiki torch. So he looks at me, and I'm just a floating head above the flame. Ah, ha, 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 ha. So you were the, the great wizard yeah. for just a moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was great. It was awesome. The great and powerful boater. If you, if you pause... <laughs> Then to like, well, not pause, but like you go to the, the scoreboard screen, whatever, and you can, you know, it's huge and you're sitting here with a vantage point above, you know, like the tiny little island, whatever. Meanwhile, any player looks up and sees a hundred, hundred yard wide head just up there in the air. <laughs> please tell me, please tell me the voice goes, show me what you got. <laughs> <laughs> Let's walk about mini golf. That's a lot of fun. Again, you if you have bad. a VR headset uh, and you know others that do, I think it's fifteen dollars, and there's a couple of DLC courses as well. But absolutely worth the fifteen. I already messaged him, and I was like, "Yo, I'm streaming tonight, but the rest of the week, let me know because I totally want to play that again." Nice. Like at one point, just he went over to like a dock and just like sat down on his floor, and he's at the edge of the dock, just kind of like looking around. Uh, like he was saying that after. Yeah, after um, a round that he played with his sister, they went to, like, the back where, like, the main screen is where you pick your level or whatever. But you can wander around there. And they just, like, kind of sat down and were, like, looking out at the ocean while they were talking and catching up. <sighs> it's cool. There's, like, a cherry blossom one. He was like, yeah, I just went there to, like, hang out in the environment. It's awesome. It's so much fun. That's sick. Um, That's playing. Have you been watching anything uh, recently, uh, I did watch the most recent episode of uh, the Book of Boba Fett. Yep, um, we're gonna be talking it. There's gonna be spoilers. I'm sorry. Um, it's over seven days old at this point. Yeah, like, and if you aren't gonna catch up on it, uh, I'll I'll do one of these when we stop talking about it. Just yeah, mute, we'll mute we'll flail tab. when we're done. Don't go away, but just mute the tab yeah. up top. Uh, in fact, if you're lurking. Mute the tab, because uh, if you mute it down below, you're not actually helping us with the metric and watching. You're just taking up your own bandwidth. Um, Book of Boba Fett, episode five. Um, there was no Boba Fett! It, I really enjoyed The Mandalorian season 2.5. Of course, I say that as a <laughs> joke, but like at the end of it, he's like, you know, I sure, I'll, I'll help you out, but I got to see someone first. So I'm like, is next episode... Also, just going to be the further adventures of Din Djarin? I, <laughs> Is season, Mandalorian season 2.5 two episodes long? I don't know. The reason I didn't hate that was imagine how much of a pain in the ass storytelling-wise it would have been for Mandalorian the next season to have, uh, okay, so here's how, uh, okay, so there's this sweet helmet, and he goes the sword, and then he goes over here, and he's doing these, and then, like, and they're like, and now it's current guy with Boba Fett, and everybody's happy. <laughs> no, it was, it was great. I mean, as far as Disney is, Plus is concerned, you know, they, if you're just watching for Mandalorian, they make sure you're watching for this too if you want to stay caught up. Um, they may include a couple clips of that before the next season, whatever. But it was it was great stuff because you know you kind of wonder what Din is going to do after he's dropped off Grogu. That's what this the series had been about for for two seasons. Yeah. Um, and so you know you kind of go back. He's doing the bounty hunting. He's not getting any enjoyment out of it. He's just doing it to further being able to reunite with the other Mandalorians. Whoopsie doodles! I'm a heretic now, I guess. 
And then, uh, well, I have other things I need to do. You could have driven a truck through that pause. Have you removed your helmet? And I really wish he had responded with, well, have you? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and it's great because, like, he has his code, his own personal code of honor. He wasn't going to lie just to, to stay in because he's, you know, he is Mandalorian. Um, just not Death Watch Mandalorian. And, like, this is the first time that, you know, um, when, uh, what's-his-name Vizsla was mentioned by name. Yeah. Um, which, if you watch the Clone Wars, you know that Vizsla is, you know, the big Death Watch Mandalorian name. Um, and so it's just, like, if anyone was like, they're not actually Death Watch, they can't act, maybe Bo-Katan is wrong, maybe she's lying, whatever, this just kind of puts the, no, that's, that's the truth. (laughs) <laughs> because, like, you know, all the people of, like, maybe Rey's actually somebody. Maybe she's not nobody. Uh, you know, maybe Vader isn't actually Luke's dad. Maybe he was lying. And this just kind of puts a... Yeah, no, Bo-Katan wasn't lying. The Death Watch. So he's maybe going to find what it means to be Mandalorian apart from being Death Watch, which he didn't realize was a thing. A, a, a TikToker that I do follow, Mesa Windu... Uh, uh. Insane Games TV rub for you, pal. Um, did a point us out something very thing that he really should have before answering the question or after he answered the question. It was like, well, you're not a Mandalorian. You need to get out. He should have looked at the one guy and been like, I'm not a Mandalorian. I'm wheeling this mythological Mandalore weapon and I just beat your ass. <laughs> How are you still here? Like, because they would have definitely started putting out exceptions. Yeah. Like, well, maybe. Like, <laughs> my friend is on t- uh, TikTok is BP Stoyle and he talks about uh, that as well. So that's why he was talking about how like. He, you know, we see him trying to go back to where he was at the start of season one. Yeah, but it's just not who he is anymore. He's grown out of being just a bounty hunter, and that's what he does. Um, uh, and just like there was a lot of fan service in this episode, but it didn't feel. I mean, the fact the end one in the first place was a little, little on the nose, but other than that, like most of the fan service was uh, felt pretty well integrated. For the most part, I've been really happy with how the Disney Plus shows have done that. There is a lot of fan service in them. If you look just under the surface, um, you know, Dude Icarus saying, Wizard. <laughs> um, actually, I really need to check. Uh, second, uh, Steph and I watched it again the other night, so we've watched it twice by now. And when they're going around the N1 and there's, like, writing on it, Steph is like, can you read that? Because she knows that I can, to some extent, read Arabesh. I said, Naboo's script is different. I can't read that. Um, but I want to look at that and look at, like, say, the one that Anakin was flying in episode one and see if it's, like, the same N1. I wouldn't be surprised. That would be hysterical. Because, of course, then it traces the route going through Beggar's Canyon with the exact same camera shots as the pod race in episode one. Which, two comments on that. Number one, it's a sports broadcast area. They have the cameras at the same corners of the track. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> um, number two, that's out of Moss Eisley. The pod race was out of Moss Espa. I thought those cities were a lot further apart than that, but what do I know? He did. He, d- he is flying a spaceship. He did go uh, very fast to get there. So, you know, it's fine. He just crossed over three flyover states in about two minutes to get to Beggar's Canyon. <laughs> Don't worry, folks. He did get pulled over. You know, all things are just... Uh, It was such a fun... Well, like, uh, random fan service. The Jawas show up with some part that they clipped out of the bottom of a speeder, which looks like exactly the same part that Han Solo was trying to use to prop open the trash compactor. When he was like, where'd you get this out of? I was like, please say trash compactor. Please say trash bin. (laughs) I just... I really like... I, I love the, the background stuff mm-hmm. of all these things. And episodes like these are great because, no, nothing revolutionary happened per se. But it's all these little details that make these characters, like, f- seem real. And not just, like, they're standing static until we look at them again. You know what I mean? Like, Yeah. Um, <laughs> the life-size N1 is in Boston. I uh, the X-Wings that that were used for the first season of Mandalorian, though, the X-Wing that was used is the one that's in Galaxy's Edge in Orlando. I saw that one already, so now I gotta... Good. Steve! You're hurting Boater's feelings. <laughs> <laughs> 
They were taken down many years so ago. So it's not the same one. It's okay, whatever. <laughs> Apology accepted. <laughs> Please read the full thing. Um, let's talk a little bit about how, like, we didn't see Boba at all. And I like that this was done as something as part of the season because with The Expanse, I know that with Amazon X Ray, there were only six episodes of The Expanse, but there's extra scenes that are like actually fully filmed, have effects and everything that are in X Ray that are basically the equivalent of a special feature on a Blu ray disc. Yeah. But since it's not a physical release, it's that. So I like that this was folded into the actual story, and I don't have to go to some side feature in Disney Plus to see that. I, I like that it's in the main storyline itself. But, yeah, it's really interesting that there wasn't a single cut to Boba at all. Like, I thought it was going to be still mostly about him, and then Din walks in the kitchen at the start, and I'm like, wow, they didn't waste any time. I thought they were going to bring him in halfway through the next episode. <laughs> um, but They yeah. did ham-fistedly foretell that at the end of the previous episode, though. Well, they, they showed <laughs> that he was going to be there, but I thought they, they were going to make us wait. I thought they, like, had us by the balls, and they were like, eh, just nope. wait, it's going to happen. I, I liked that this this uh, this little episode had its own little arc, and it worked, and it was fun, mm -hmm. um, and such good came of it, uh, and and so many things can now come from this. Um, I really hope Mando gets a droid. By the way, no, I was what like, how is he gonna hunt bounties in that without thinking of the fact that well, he's probably not gonna be a bounty hunter. I was, you know. Uh, and then I said to, I said to my friend Brian, uh, I was like, oh, well, you know, maybe they can go in where the droid port was. And he just comes back all caps. That's Grogu's seat. <laughs> sorry, sorry. My bad. <laughs> Grogu can sit on his lap. Grogu can, can sit, sit on his lap. The yeah. There's not a connection between there and the droid port. Grogu's on his lap. It's not the same shit between movie and show. Not surprised. Um, but, uh, yeah, I, I just want to check like if in canon, it has the same writing or something on it. Because, yeah, it was it was really cool to see. Um, yeah, I was excited with that episode. I can't wait to see more. That's what I've been uh, That's what I've been watching. I know you've been watching as well. Anything else on your watch list? Um, yes, actually. And I'm going to segue from here. Now that we're 45 minutes into the show, eh, not quite. Um, last night, I was just in a kind of mood where I didn't want to do anything. I didn't really want to be productive. Wasn't feeling great. So I took the opportunity to watch Line Goes Up, Why NFTs Are a Scam. This was published on the 21st by, oh gosh, it was Folded something. I can look up the uh, the account on YouTube really quick. But um, And I was like, oh, you know, that might be something that's interesting because like I've seen it recommended a ton recently. Uh, and I look and I look and I realize, oh my God, it is over two hours long. It's a documentary, more or less. Uh, it's more or less just one guy talking to a camera the whole time. It's by Folding Ideas, is the channel name. Um, it's two hours and 18 minutes long. Talking about not just NFTs, but um, it's uh, it talks about the NFTs being built on crypto and how crypto came to be in relation to the financial and economic collapse of 2008. Um, how Bitcoin was a response to that, Ethereum a response to that, how NFTs were built based on this, problems that they've had along the way. It does mention some of the things that we've talked about as far as being wasteful on hardware, about being bad for the environment. But like the environmental thing was almost like a side note in talking about how wasted electricity is a feature of blockchain technology and not a bug. Hmm. Um and it spends most of its time talking, you know, once it gets you in on the background, which takes a half an hour at least, <sighs> talks about the ways that it's been used for various scams, talks about uh, problems with plagiarization, uh, where, you know, just art is being stolen and being used to mint NFTs, talks about its use in pump and dump scams and so forth. And I learned so much that I forgot a lot afterward, but I know that I, I went to bed after that. And I woke up at least twice during the night with nightmares of everything in our economy being based on blockchain technology. It, I, I don't know. Yeah. But um, uh, again, that is line goes up why NFTs are a scam. <laughs> Didn't know Bethesda was a pioneer of NFTs with their features. Um, and I, I don't want to talk a whole lot about like. There's some mention of video games, like there's um, DAOs, which are uh, 
I, I won't even, but like, that would be like, oh yeah, our project is that we're going to make a video game. Any details on it? No, we're going to make a video game based on the money that we make from, you know, selling off the NFTs. It's just very, uh, eh. but I will use that to transition into this week's NFT roundup. Um, because I mentioned plagiarization, um, and it's well known that people just like steal art from say DeviantArt, um, and use that to mint an NFT to the point where DeviantArt made a tool where they will let someone know, hey, we found your art over here being used as an NFT. Is this you? If not, here's how you can report it. Which is great for DeviantArt. Um, OpenSea, which is the largest, uh, or at least the preeminent uh, NFT marketplace right now, um, this past week on September 27th, uh, announced that they were going to place limits on free NFT minting. Without consulting the community, without anything, they were just like, we're doing this. You can only mint uh, five series of 50 NFTs for free. After that, you need to actually start paying the transaction costs for them. There was a huge backlash. We were like, why are you doing this? Whatever. And they came back and they're like, <sighs> okay, fine. We're not going to do that. But here's why we did it. Because 80% of items created with this tool were plagiarized works, fake collections, and spam. Um... And it's, uh, like, they said, this is a major problem. This is how we're going to limit it. And then the community, which is, again, the people who are plagiarizing works, who are making fake collections and making spam, were like, don't do that. That hurts us. And so they're like, oh, sorry, my bad. <laughs> but, Boater, you wouldn't steal a car. You wouldn't right-click an image on the Internet. I mean, I would be more than happy to right-click images. Um, I I made some uh, post about watching A Line Goes Up Why NFTs Are a Scam. That uh, that tweet got four likes, three of which were people with, like, Board Ape Yacht Club uh, profile pics. Nice. You obviously didn't read it. <laughs> so, um, OpenSea immediately rolled back the limits, but said it would continue to work on exploring options for, quote, deterring bad actors, which is words and not actions. So, sure thing. Um... Any comment on that? There's one more thing I had for NFT, which I know I, that was just one I told you about ahead of time. But yeah, like OpenSea just being like, we have a way to stop uh, abuse of free NFT minting. Oh, we're not going to do it because people don't like it. The people that were abusing it don't like it. That, that sounds about right. Um, I wonder if they got like any money for it. Like, I, I don't know. <laughs> um, but um, meanwhile, uh, Team 17... To, to bring this back into gaming, Team 17 is the publisher and developer of the Worms series. Okay. Um, back in 2013, they uh, they started publishing indie titles, working with indie developers to provide a platform to get indie titles out there. Um, and that's been going really well. Um, so it took a lot of people by surprise, for some reason, when they decided to release their own set of NFTs, which were received about as well as you could expect very poorly by uh, their players as well as by um, developers who have published through them. Um, so I'm going to share this bit from AgroCrab, which has published a couple of games. I went and I, I looked them up. I'm actually really interested in their game Going Under, which is a procedural dungeon crawler where you're an unpaid intern and you go through a dungeon beneath your corporation's office building. <laughs> that's called Going Under it's by the developer Agro Crab um, and they took to Twitter to post we at Agro Crab condemn Team 17's decision to produce and engage with NFTs we believe NFTs cannot be environmentally friendly or useful and really are just an overall fucking grift please do not harass employees at Team 17 Please do not harass employees at Team 17 or the devs under their umbrella, as this decision seems to have taken everyone off guard and likely came from the very top. Needless to say, we will not be working with them on further titles and encouraging other indie developers to do the same unless this decision is reversed. I fucking hate it here. Nick and Kalen. Um, this was just one response out of many, and... Man, that energy of I fucking hate it here resonates very strongly. It's like, mood. I will keep that in my uh, repertoire as a Facebook profile pic for times <laughs> that I need it because, man, <laughs> there are times I need it. 
um, even out of, especially out of context. But in this context, uh, that was so strong that as of, I believe, five hours ago, Team 17 took to Twitter, let's see, as of four and a half hours ago, and said, Team 17 is today announcing an end to the MetaWorms NFT project. We have listened to our Teamsters, development partners, and our games communities, and the concerns they've expressed, and have therefore taken the decision to step back from the NFT space. Which is tempting to call it a win, but you should have listened to anybody other than the tech bros who really want you to get into it, and just not gone there in the first place. You don't get a win for deciding after the fact that it was a bad decision when any amount of research could have told you that from the start. Yeah. At the most, you've avoided the biggest L. Welcome more like rigor mortis at seeing the angry crab when you first log in, so that's a good way to jump into the stream with just, I fucking hate it here. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so thank you, Team17, for not actually going through with your Worms NFT project. But, like, come on. You sh we shouldn't have to thank you for stepping back from, I'm gonna jump! Uh, just kidding. Just don't. There's a demo version on Steam for Going Under. I can't wait to try it. Oh, I might do that on Brunch with Boater. I've been doing a lot of Horizon Zero Dawn on Brunch with Boater. I may take a break and play that, because that sounds amazing. Um, anyway, that's the NFT roundup. Uh, OpenSea I... saying that, like, hey, we could stop spam and, and plagiarism and stuff like that, but because the plagiarists and the spammers don't want us to, we won't. Um and Team 17 saying, we're going to go into NFTs. Everyone's saying no, and them being, maybe we've reconsidered. I uh, I did have a little bit of NFT uh, oh. news as well. Yes, let's hear it. Uh, coming from our friends at Riot Games, and more specifically, <sighs> one of their characters in Valorant. Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, they posted an image of one of their most recent characters, Killjoy, visiting a local museum in Berlin, where she's taking in the works of Martin Haura, uh -huh. an artist whose work is sold as NFTs. So, you know, one of those things that you look at the context in the background, you match the, the, the call signs on a spaceship, and you see that all oh, these two things are linked, and, you know, could be a tease. But Valorant seemed to realize what they were yeah, doing. Yeah, a lot of people like, oh, this better not be an NFT announcement. Um. So they, they of course, immediately tweeted out an explanation uh, for their character, and it went thusly. <clears throat> Hopla! We're version au, auf unseren Lokachen Kellermann immer Weiner... Oh, that's the German version. Uh, they said, whoopsie! Whoopsie! We're always trying to give you new experiences and interesting facts of our local channels, including a look into Killjoy and her hometown of Berlin. Since Killjoy loves programming, we wanted to introduce you to a computer-generated art from around the world. However, we are not a, we were not aware uh, that we selected work as an NFT. In no way did we intend to include NFTs as part of Killjoy's work and Like, you could hobbies. Google the artist and be like, oh, that's an NFT artist. Like, they very clearly picked that artist for the work that that was being viewed. This is an issue that, that uh, Wizards of the Coast also has... Where, you know, when you make a set that has thousands of cards mm -hmm. and an artist submits something and then later you find out, oh, by the way, that's stolen art or this is this. Yeah. And then Wizards of the Coats is like, damn it. Like, come yeah. on. Like, <laughs> so fortunately, it looks like another time where we get to softly golf clap for Riot. Uh, not not a big old. Yeah, it wasn't back. even we're going to do it and then step back. It was you didn't mean to do it in the first place. You could have like, done more research. But considering how we're weighing things right now, at least it wasn't plagiarized. I'm, I'm, I'm ho what I'm hoping comes from all of this. You get a bronze star. You get, you certainly do get to play comp uh, in in a riot game. That's what you get. Uh, <laughs> yeah, you get the better than those guys. That'll be a what nerdy. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the, uh, a, the nerdy a nerdy category award. of the. <laughs> Of the least shit. <laughs> <laughs> You're the smallest of two turds. <laughs> <laughs> the lesser of evils. 
Uh, gosh, Dave, we've got, I don't know, 10 we've minutes got, left well, in the we've show. We've got Let's so talk. many topics and we've so got many so stories, many. and we're so excited that you guys share with us every week. But there is future programming coming up on the network, and we don't want to step on that one. But I do want to take a minute to give some kudos out to our friend, Jackson, who has been crushing oh, yeah. it, who just joined us here on Tuesdays earlier last week doing the inaugural and will be in future programs playing some uh, some of the most recent Yu-Gi-Oh! game. If you're a fan of a good time, if you're a fan of supporting local communities and things like that, make sure to make sure on Insane Games TV on your Tuesdays, starts at 2 with OC5, goes till 5, and then Jackson picks it right up and leads you right here into Nerd Glasses. Which then leads into uh, the Citadel featuring Le Boder here, where you're playing what this week? Playing the Outer Worlds this week. I know I played it last week. I have a game picked out that I think is going to be a pretty good stinker for next week, but I wanted to actually get a little more promo on that. So we're doing the Outer Worlds again this week on the Citadel nice. immediately after Nerd Glasses. But yeah, uh, thank you, Jack. Like, just. Uh, it's really cool having a full Tuesday lineup. I love what he's doing. It's Insane Games Live right now, taking place in between OC5 Remix and Nerd Glasses. I love it. It's been great. He's killing it. Tune in. Chat with him. It's a great time. Um, so, as long as we're talking about nerdies, one of our big ones was the Bowl of Petunias, the story that wouldn't go away. Yeah. And as we're looking at this year, obviously we're seeing a lot of NFT type stuff, but another one that's happening is Acquisitions. <laughs> Nobody can stop buying other people. <laughs> it's it's just basically the video game equivalent of colonialism. Like we're just running, they're literally just running around and going like, who, who what corporation are you owned by? Nobody. You're ours now! Like, flag! <laughs> <laughs> ours! <laughs> As we announced last week on the program, Microsoft with a a surprise sweep acquisition of ActiBlizz. Yeah, Microsoft bought Activision Blizzard. And Dave, what company has both of those companies in common? There's huh. a company that, although I had games before them, was owned by one of these companies and put out a really big franchise that really helped put that company in the map for the marketplace. You and, would... and then they went independent and were bought by the other company and put out another huge IP before going independent again. Who could that be? Why, you bounce once, you bounce twice, you strap it around, and you're looking at Bungie itself. Bungie? We're... But Xbox wouldn't have succeeded the way it did without Halo. Um, so Bungie, in some respects, made Xbox um, more, th much more than it would have been otherwise, and it's like, certainly more money. Yeah, uh. yeah. Like I don't know if Xbox would have gotten as successful as it did in that generation without Halo being a huge headliner, really early on in its life cycle. Um, and then after a bunch of Halo games. Uh, they they went independent, and then Activision Blizzard bought them up uh, for, what, like a 10-year contract working on Destiny. Um, and then they went independent again. And um, who would see all this and say, you know what, I want some of that? Well, I enjoyed, though, uh, in, the, in the, so in the grand scheme, yeah. my, my, uh, my fandom is, is very uh, 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 happy because Sony Interactive Entertainment has purchased Bungie for $3.6 billion. Um, of course, like anything else, as long as it doesn't get kiboshed and all these things. Dave, 3.6 on December 31st of last year, if you said $3.6 billion, you'd be like, that's so much money! After the January acquisitions of like $12.6 billion, $68.7 billion, we're like, 3.6! Pshaw! Chump change, says Dude Icarus. <laughs> that's, that's Monday <laughs> afternoon news size <laughs> amount of money! Like, <laughs> it's interesting because like I was hearing talk where like Microsoft has more cash at hand than Sony's market cap. Just because of like the different uh, amounts of like industries that they're in yeah um so it's like it's not a pissing contest necessarily but it's still it's not it's still, yet it's, but it's, it's kind of a pissing contest <laughs> but like it's it's still interesting to see um that again like it's it's funny like it is undoubtedly funny that playstation now has bungie and it's 
Hold have, on, hold on. Can you, you mute for a second? I just had to make sure that I could call Bungie the town bicycle because everybody's getting a ride. <laughs> Sony's gonna have them for ten years. Then Nintendo's gonna grab them. <laughs> I, I, uh, I always find it funny when we see things like this. Uh, but first of all, speaking of Bungie, uh, uh, Activision Blizzard totally dropping the ball and just letting them walk away with Destiny. Um, but at the same point, I know what you're thinking. But now they're owned by Sony, and there's going to be IP splits in this and the other. This contract explicitly states that any intellectual properties created by Bungie during the duration of this contract and all these things that are going on remain Bungie's. Yes. So they remain Bungie's. Um currently um like Destiny will remain multi-platform. I think that Bungie has the option to publish multi-platform going forward. Yes, they do. But they, they will do. probably have incentives not to do so, or at least to do it timed exclusivity on PlayStation. There is, there is some, there was talk that there's an awful lot of incentives to make just PlayStation games, and there's seemingly less incentives uh, and assistance rendered to then do. Uh, across the aisle, but at the same point, even when it was owned by Activision, a lot of like there was a lot more cool stuff going on for PlayStation players of Destiny. There was a lot more exclusives and and incentives and stuff. Yeah, well, and that's that also kind of helped this buyout occur because Bungie had been getting these generous uh, uh, donations and incentives by PlayStation to make these events and make items PlayStation exclusive and do all these things, which in a game that is a, a live service of sorts mm -hmm. is big and it does influence who gets first or who gets these things. Yeah. Because if you're paying to keep the studio running for another six months in one go, yeah, it's going to go like, yeah. And, and that wasn't, uh, do you have anything more to say about that particular bio? Um, I'm just excited to see what Bungie now creates on the other side of the fence. Yeah, because um, it's interesting. Like they were, they were the Halo developers under Microsoft. They're the Destiny developers under ActiBliz, and I wonder what they'll come out with next. It's going to be epic, whatever it is, and it is likely going to be cross-platform because Bungie's not stupid. Um, <laughs> um, that wasn't the only buyout announced in the past seven days, though. Last week we talked about it, and I started playing it because we talked about it, and I got a little clarity, so thank you on that, Boater. Um, um, and I've been posting our, our my things in, in my Discord, by the way, and you okay, should join okay. in on that uh, under live chat. Um, me and CJ uh, Playmaker have been going back and forth every day and seeing who, who does better or things like that and enjoying it. But uh, I got, I got uh, third guest today. Um, nice. But I don't know how long I'm going to keep playing Wordle, because the New York Times bought it from Josh Wardle for low seven figures. So somewhere between one and three million, probably. Which, considering... Five million, five hundred and fifty-five thousand... I would call five. that mid seven <laughs> figures. Like, you go from maybe 3.5 up to 7.5, that's mid. But, um... Maybe 6.5. Uh, but, uh, considering that he made the game for his wife... For an audience of one, but then had it out there in such a way that other people could play it too. Has millions of daily players. And now the New York Times gave him probably millions of dollars, or at least a million dollars for <laughs> at it. Le at least between ah and a few million. <laughs> yeah, somewhere between <laughs> ah and a few million dollars for Wordle. Um, and that is going to... Um, at the moment, they say that initially it is not going to be behind their New York Times games play paywall. Which is like seventy five cents a week, or something. I don't know. Don't worry, Vladdy has access to it, and we'll just steal his account. <laughs> but, well, because you know, um, Josh Wardle said that he wants to make sure that people can carry over their their progress and their streaks and stuff like that. I started playing on my PC and eventually switched to my phone, so I'm missing about a, a week or so of data on there. But whatever, which is a shame actually. My first week I had a lot of threes, and those are missing from my stats. Um, but uh, yeah. Once it goes behind the paywall, I'm probably going to stop playing it because there will probably be a free version that somebody makes that people can play with a slight change, some color changes or something. Considering what Wordle is, it's based on a bunch of games that came before it. Someone can put a totally different name on it, say it's based on those games, and they'd be just fine to do that. 
the big thing, the reason everyone's playing Wordle is because everyone's playing Wordle. There's a consensus for the one thing to be played right now. When New York Times gets it and it goes behind a paywall, there's going to be a lot fewer people that want to go there. Me, personally, I don't like the New York Times. I hate most of the stuff that they publish in their, like, they, they publish some stuff that I hate in their Going opinion, straight whatever. Straight for the throat. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I don't like the New York Times. Um, so I'm not Perfect. gonna, I'm not gonna pay even for their, you know, cheap games only subscription. Um, but like that's kind of like that's a business they've been doing a lot for like people that just want to play their crossword, people that just want to play other games that they've got, and now Wordle will be added to the list. That's, that's a savvy move for them. And just as we're talking about, you know, Microsoft buying. Bethesda, Microsoft buying Active Blizz, uh, Sony buying um, uh, Bungie, all these moves that are to bring more stuff under their umbrella to make money off of what other people are doing. This is a really smart move for New York Times. I'm oh, yeah. just not going to follow it when it goes. I, I will say I you can see the, the thick line on the ground where they're trying to do, which is, hey, you like doing word scrambles and things. You know who has word scrambles? The New York Times newspaper, which you can get every day. And then mm -hmm. you can get the jumbo on Sunday. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, so yeah, I'm. Um, I I won't follow it behind the paywall. I will be interested to see what free alternative comes up and if there's any consensus reached for what is the one to play. But and, uh, until it goes behind that paywall, though, I'm gonna keep playing it. Yesterday's was really mean. Yesterday's was like, um, I think the word was would, but I guess like could. And uh, and a couple other things before I got to it. I, I obviously I can't bring it up right now. But yesterday's was one of those like, not like should wouldn't work. But it was one of those, or no, it was like light. I got it in three. You had um, a yellow, a yellow, and then all green. That's pretty good. Good job. Today was not easy. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I saw someone yesterday's that had like gray and four green. For like three lines before they filled out the whole thing. Um, Wordle's fun. Yeah, it was it was light and it play could it also with us. Enjoy and, uh, what you enjoy, but just remember that just like uh, uh, the 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 balloon that happened to Among Us, the balloon that happened to Farmville, the balloon that happened to all these other games. People who play games casually are going to move on. Yep. Um, and so hopefully, Wordle does a good job of avoiding that to some extent because they meter it out to just one a day. So you can't burn out yes. on it quite as fast? I really also enjoy that there's not a pay-to feature. Mm -hmm. Even when that game blew up, there wasn't a, hey, you can get a couple hints for like a quarter. Like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I mean, there were some apps that did that um, and just called themselves Wordle and eventually got taken down. Yeah, I, I originally I did go to the app store and I typed in Wordle and I'm looking at it and I was like, I was like, no, that's not that free to play. Yeah. Like, like and I was like, why? I was like, why am I looking at 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 the app store for this? Like, yeah. Um, What's going on, Text TV? So notice, uh, uh, Microsoft shells out the the uh, the two digit billions. Yep. Sony, the one digit billions. New York Times, between oh. awe and some million. Be between awe and a few, which um, more like rigor mortis is calling the unit between awe and a few is a boater. <laughs> <laughs> if if you're not familiar with the rest of her quote, there she says that um, a Sagan is referred to as uh, as four billion, okay? Um, because he didn't actually say it, but he's stereotyped for saying billions and billions. Well, billions is at least two, and billions is at least two. So put those together, four billion is officially a Sagan. So a boater is somewhere between a uh, and a few. Thank you, more like Rick and Mortis. I love, love it. What's going on, Text TV? Um, so we're, no, we're noticing though, there's a there's a deflation of acquisitions. There, there, the the news is getting big on it, but the numbers not that big, not that big. Dave, I'll give you a steward's card with six punches to own you. No, I'm worth uh, to two companies minimum wage at least, sir. <laughs> Thank you very much. Um, I have a small amount of. <laughs> Sorry, couldn't finish that one. Sorry, I couldn't. Um, one, one quick little... See if I have anything to sweeten the pot. Continue. One quick little add-on to our... I have a parking ticket from 2019. Acquisitions. <laughs> no, thank you, because... Uh, 
Lord knows I probably still have a parking ticket from one of my colleges that I definitely didn't pay and I definitely uh, kept it just a paste somewhere. Um, I've been I've been crowing on about the the rumored Discord PlayStation Network fines that would tie. And today they officially released in the U.S. a way to link your PlayStation Network onto your Discord it is not yet moving into the territory of replacing PlayStation chat and things like that, but it is quickening up your ability to go to one place and see, are your friends on the PlayStation network? Are they on the, are they playing the game on PC? Are they playing it on Microsoft? Are they playing it on something else? Um, And you can just go there and you can then join up games through your discord on your PlayStation nice. that way. Nice. Um, it's a feature that's being rolled out now in the U.S. Uh, because I'm I'm guessing there's just density wise, there's a lot, but not more than other places. And then they're going to be giving it to the rest of the world uh, soon. Starting tonight, I will link my PlayStation account and my Discord, and I'm going to be really stoked about that, <laughs> uh, so people can see when I'm playing Spidey Man uh, and hating every minute of it. Um, yeah. It's going to be really stoked, and it di- they did, all the news outlets that talked about it said there is rumored to be more coming of it, and there should be, and I'm very excited to see that Discord and PlayStation aren't, PlayStation didn't buy Discord. Yeah, um, yeah, that as, would have me, uh, but having nice tight integration like that, that does make me happy. Um, the fact that PlayStation did what they did with Bungie, which is just, hey, here's some seed money. Like, when you do your fundraising, yes, it does lead to bigger things down the future, but as Discord grows and as it does, they'll definitely be able to avoid what we were all afraid of uh, almost a year ago now at this Mm -hmm. point, where at this point, if they get bought up by a big company, Discord as we know, it's gone. Like, oh yeah, they're oh, not yeah. big enough yet to to fight off the uh, the ever charming slides and and sands of big companies, the bullshit that comes from above. Um, we are unfortunately out of time, which is a shame, because I also wanted to talk a little bit about the Halo TV series trailer that came out. Um, it takes place in a second timeline, which is really friggin' weird, and it looks like ass, like the 2007 Transformers movie. Well, it doesn't look like ass, but it's overgraded and friggin' weird looking. Um, <laughs> as well as a post by Activision Blizzard's Vice President of Quality Assurance, which is anti-union propaganda. Both of those topics, well, I mean, I already said everything I wanted to say about the Halo TV series trailer. Go check it out. There's live-action Cortana, like, not a CG or anything, just like, hey, here's a human that they did against green screen. <laughs> Um, but uh, the Activision Blizzard one, I will make sure to post in the Tabled Topics channel on Discord. So again, make sure that you're following us there. There is a, going to be a behind-the-scenes shot of our stream deck from earlier today on there. Uh, I'm going to be posting that sometime tomorrow. So make sure that you're on that. Join the discussion. I'd love to see you there. Um, but, of course, after this is going to be the Citadel. So make sure that you stick around because when we go offline, it takes us five minutes to move everything ten feet that way. Make sure our audio is good. Ten minute countdown, and I'll see you playing the Outer Worlds. Dave, do you have anything final to add here? Just that I'm really excited that you folks came and joined us today, and we look forward to seeing you as every Tuesday uh, here live on Insane Games TV. Make sure to ring that bell. Make sure you're following so you get notified every time we go live. So much programming, so much content, so much fun. Mm-hmm. You're welcome. You're welcome. <laughs> we'll leave it at that. Thank you, everyone, for watching. Have a good one. We will see you next week. Bye. Hey, Love wait. you, bye. Oh, it's that one. Okay, bye. Bye.